Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's make a start. So I have my objects loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I'm enabling viewport sh uh, shading and I've got a principled shader set up applied to my object already. So the first thing that I'm going to add here is a Voronoi texture. So press shift A to find that. And then I'm going to add a color ramp. And I'm also going to connect up a mapping node and a texture coordinate to the Voronoi texture. And I'm going to connect the Voronoi texture to the color ramp. Now I'm going to duplicate the Voronoi texture and plug the mapping node into the vector for that as well. But I'm going to change the feature output to smooth F1. I'll duplicate the color ramp and plug that in here. And then I need to control the scale on both with the same value. So I'm using a value node and plugging that into both of those textures and setting it to five. The randomness and the smoothness I'm leaving uh, as they are. Now we need to sort of start putting these textures together. To do that, we're going to use a bit of math. So I'm going to add a math node, set it to subtract, and plug my two color ramps into that. I'll then duplicate the math node and set that to less than. Plug the value from the subtract into the top value on the less than. It's probably a bit too close. And then change the threshold to 0 0.065. Now you won't have seen anything happen up here so far because I haven't actually plugged it into the main shader. So let's do that now. I'm going to plug this directly into the alpha. So this is controlling visibility. Now as you can see it's giving us lots of basically um, random bits which are great. So wherever these white bits appear it's opaque and wherever the black bits are, it's transparent. But I want that to be the other way around because I want holes. So I'm going to add an inversion node or invert. Plop that on there and set it to a factor of one. So now you can see we've now got sort of a mesh that forms around each of those cells. Now, to give us a bit of, a um, tiny bit of depth, in fact, we're going to add a bump node. Plug that into the normal, and we're going to take the value from the less than node and plug that into the height. Now, let's change the color of the main cell. And if we set the material metallic value up to one we can see that actually this is the wrong way round so we're going to check invert so that the um, thickness is going inwards so we've got almost like a lip that the light will catch on and then so that we don't have the same color on both sides we can take the vector from the mm, was it the vector? No. The object from the texture coordinate and plug that in the normal of the bump map. And then basically it will only put the material on the outside face. If you want the other way around, fine, disconnect that. That's not a problem. Other than that, 
There's not a huge amount that I'm going to do to this because it was mostly to show you how to create that. So there is your basic node tree. Let's send that to render. Okay, there we go. There we have our abstract cell mesh. As you saw, there's various other ways of um, fiddling about with the nodes to get different results, different cool sci-fi effects. So go have a play. In the meantime, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.